Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Holy Trinity. It's uh, good to uh, see you. Well, for you to, for us, for me to see the people here, but it's also good that people have joined us on Zoom as well. And we do welcome Bernard Frey from Romney College this morning. So, as we begin, we're going to start by singing "Stand Strong When Life Changes." So, would you please stand? Whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, so um, Bernard is going to say the odd numbered verses, and we're all going to say the even numbered verses. Psalm 84, verse 1. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, indeed it faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. At your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those who live in your house, ever singing your praise. Happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God then live in the tents of, the wicked, of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, happy is everyone who trusts in you. 
Now I'm going to invite you to stand again and to sing Lord of all hopefulness. <laughs> Would you please be seated? As we say together, Almighty God, God, to whom all hearts are open, open, all desires know, and, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. We now come to our time when we're going to say that we're sorry for the things that we've done, the time that we've left God out of our lives or not behaved the way that we know we should have. And so we just spend a few moments while we think about those things we want to say sorry for. And then we say together, Almighty God, God our, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father we, we have, have sinned, sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And then we say together the prayer for the 12th Sunday after the Trinity. God, God of, constant of constant mercy, who, who sent, sent your, your son, son to save us, us Remind, Remind us, us of, of your goodness. goodness. Increase, Increase your, your grace within us, that our thankfulness may grow through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. And then we're going to have our first reading. Thank you, Richard. Our first reading is Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, and fasten the belt of truth around your waist, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times, in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, Richard. We're now going to sing, Guide me, O thy great Redeemer.
Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult, who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one who would betray him. And he said, for this reason, I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, do you also wish to go away? And Simon Peter said, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise. Praise. Please sit down, everyone. There are some words in our Christian belief which we actually, we actually never use apart from here. For instance, how many of you have said the word crucifixion during the last week? I don't think I have, apart from in the church service. How many of you use the word sacrament? I don't think so. But there's one word that we've taken into our language and we use it regularly. And it's the word miracle. Standing at the bus stop the other day, an old lady said to me, if this bus ever comes, it'll be a miracle. And I thought, ah, that word again has come into our language. And I'm going to talk about a miracle this morning. A miracle which didn't actually happen to, to me, but which I was involved with. When I first retired, I got a message to say, would you go and look after our church in Genoa in Italy? I thought, how can I refuse that? So I said, well, I'll have a go, yes. I don't speak Italian. No, well, it doesn't matter, it's the English church. So I went across to the beautiful city of Genoa, which is up in the north of Italy. I think it's probably Italy's largest port. Cliffs, beautiful scenery, the city itself is world heritage, it's beautiful. Just before I went, for about the second or the third time, I should say, by the way, I could only stay there for two months. The Italian law said, after two months you have to go back and somebody else must come. And so I did two months, a colleague did two months, I went back and so on, and we worked it that way, and that complied with Italian law. I don't think they were very keen on the Church of England, actually, and they wanted us out of the way, but anyway, that's another story. On the Thursday, before I was due to go back for my second or third visit, I got a phone call from the church warden, and she said, oh, once you've been away, we've had major changes We've had about 30 or 40 lovely young people from Africa who've joined us. 
she said, we've not asked to find out whether they're legal or illegal in the country, but they've been going to the Catholic church. They don't understand Italian. And the priest there has said, why don't you go to the English church? And they've all come. So she said, I'm just telling you so it doesn't take you by surprise. Fine. I got back. On the Saturday morning, I had another phone call. I hate phone calls in Italy because when you don't speak the language or you struggle with it, you haven't got your hands, you haven't got your facial expression. However, luckily, it was an American voice. And the man said, we're on holiday about 40 miles away from Genoa, and we're flying back to America on Sunday afternoon. Please may we come to your service on Sunday morning. Can you tell us how to find the church? So I did. Remember that little part of the story, the American couple. Right, so we get to Sunday morning. I went down, I unlocked the church completely empty. I was just getting ready and the door opened in the back. Two Africans came in. I thought they were together, but they weren't. One sat over here, one sat over there. I gave them a few minutes and then I went to introduce myself to this one. Very smartly dressed. He told me he worked for the Bank of Nigeria in the city. I went across to this one. As I approached him, still quite smart he stood up came out of the chair bowed very low took my hand kissed the back of my hand lifted it up to his forehead his tradition and then he said oh father please help me and fell on the floor in tears i guess he was about 20 or 22 I couldn't help but pick him up. This was a mother's son who perhaps come to start a new life. What could I do? I tried to comfort him. Eventually I sat him down and I said, tell me what's happened. He said, I arrived in Genoa last Wednesday and a friend had said, if you can't find accommodation, go to the railway station and sleep there overnight. Think of Victoria Station, big place. He said, I went, there were lots and lots of people all sleeping there. But at midnight, the station master, who must have had a bad mood, came in and moved everybody out. And they all went to a little park across the road. And he said, I followed them. And I got a space and I went to sleep. When I woke up in the morning, everybody had gone and so had all my belongings. Money, clothes, everything. I said, well, what have you had to eat since then? Wednesday, nothing. I said, really? No. He said, well, I might have picked up a bit of throwaway fruit off one of the market stalls, but otherwise nothing. I said, a lady will be coming in a moment. She will open that cupboard. We've got food in there for you. Have no worries. And by next Wednesday, come to the mass at 12.30 on Wednesday lunchtime. I will have some clothes for you. The lady arrived, he was fed, other young people arrived, and many of them went to talk to him. And I saw a smile come on his face. He recognized their dialect or whatever. And by the end of the service, he was well and truly amongst them. On Monday morning, I started to ring around the various convents and monasteries of the city. Have you any spare clothes? Have you any spare clothes? No such thing as a charity shop, by the way, in Italy. I could find nothing. They said that they'd had such demands for all the young people who'd arrived that all their store of clothes was now empty. Tuesday morning, I was really fed up, but I thought, I'm not going to give up. I promised this young man, if necessary, we'll have to go and buy him some clothes. 
I started most of the day on the Tuesday. On Tuesday night, I sang with a local choir. And strange in Italy, it didn't start till nine o'clock. Normally we are coming home at nine o'clock, but remember they've had a siesta all afternoon and the shops reopen about six and everything starts with them. So nine o'clock, I, I don't want to go to choir, I'm fed up. I want to get some clothes. Five to nine, I thought, I've got to go to choir. So I got my car out and I drove instead of walking. You imagine the, the, the place where I rehearse, rather like this, with a large room at the back. When I opened the door to go in from my car, I could not believe my eyes. It was full of clothes. And the lady in charge, who I happened to know, I said, where have all these come from? Oh, she said, we had an appeal last Sunday. Would people pre please bring clothes? I said, I don't know what to do. I've got so many. I said, I know what to do. And my car's outside. Please, can I? Oh, she said, please take as many as you can. So I did. Will the young man arrive Wednesday? He did. And at the end of the service, I took him into the little vestry. I said, here you are, help yourself. And this time, he burst into tears of happiness. He got something. Now, whilst the first incident was going on and he was very upset and I picked him up, a couple arrived at the back. American couple. They were very kind and they stood and didn't interfere with the problem that I was dealing with. But after the service, she said, what was your problem this morning? So I told her, oh, she said, isn't it dreadful? I thought no more about it. The young man had found friends, he'd found clothes and so on. Incident ended. Three weeks later, a letter came, American stamp. I thought, what is this? When I opened it, dear Father Bernard, we are the American couple who you spoke to three weeks ago. We've sent a check here from our church in America to help the young man to find accommodation and food and the others. What was the check for? 3,000 euros. Call it 3,000 pounds. They said, it will be hope, it will be enough for a whole year to look after these young people as they're learning the language, as they're trying to find work, as they're trying to help. The young man I've found out since did an awful lot of really good work in that area, helping the elderly to take their shopping up the hills and they gave him a little tip. It wasn't begging, it was their generosity and their way of saying thanks. A man at the hotel noticed him, came across one day to him and offered him a job in the hotel uniform. Wonderful. A lot of that money that he now gets, he brings to the English church and the others who are there are fed using some of his money. It's his way of saying thanks. When I told this story to one person, they said, oh, just coincidence. I said, no. Think what Einstein said. Coincidence is God working behind the scenes. Those clothes were there not by coincidence. They were there to help people. All the other things in the story wasn't coincidence. Coincidence is God working behind the scenes. If you remember nothing else, just remember that statement by 
Einstein. Coincidence is God working behind the scenes. Amen. I just want to quickly say um, that um, we do have a food bank and living well project that runs from this church here. And I think they do something like 200 food things a, a week, something like that. And so what I can say to you, uh, Father, is yeah. that we have had seen a lot of coincidences here. <laughs> I called the amount of times and we've done an appeal and we're just running out of food. I'm sure Christine can tell us that it's always arrived, isn't it, Christine? The food. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I Thank did you. call in one day, but purely by chance before I even knew I was coming here on a Sunday. And I saw the work that you were doing here and it's wonderful. Thank you all so much if you contribute to what it's doing for our local community. But at the end of it, remember, although we've got problems in this country, I can tell you that in the rest of the world, there are people and we don't even know the meaning of problem when you see the way they're having to live. And the poor people of Afghanistan, the people who've suffered in the earthquake, it's unbelievable. So be grateful and thankful to God for what you've got. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're now going to continue by singing Faithful One, So Unchanging. That's the one thing about that we know about God is that all the things that change, God is still the same. God is always there. Faithful one, so unchanging, ageless one, you're my rock of peace, Lord.
Would you please be seated as Christine's going to lead us in a prayer? We come together in prayer in God's presence, remembering his greatness, and yet how close he is to each one of us. At the end of each section, Lord, in your mercy, is followed by the response, hear our prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for his goodness. Dear Father, we thank you for your church of people who are united in faith and worship across the world. We pray today especially for those who are suffering for their faith, that they may know your presence and be truly aware of the shield of faith and your presence with them to comfort, protect and guide them. We thank you for the freedom we have today to worship. We pray that the merge between St. John's and Holy Trinity will enhance our awareness of your presence, love and care, and help us to follow Jesus' example to share your love for all our community and care for those in need in mind, body or spirit. We give you thanks for the ministry of Nick and Catherine and pray for them as they move to a different place to continue to serve you. For Jessica, as she prepares to come to lead us as the two congregations become one. And for the leaders of your church, both here and abroad. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please guide, give, give wisdom and bless those, all those in authority and direct every nation in the ways of justice and peace. Dear Father, as we follow the news of the fear and suffering taking place in Afghanistan, following withdrawal of American and British troops and collapse of their past government, we pray for the future of this country. We pray that freedoms gained over the past 20 years will not be lost that there will not be reprisals and cruelty and that refugees can be found safe homes in other countries. We pray for all those who lead governments across the world, that they will be given wisdom and discernment in their response to the situation in Afghanistan and a common purpose as they consider future actions to deal with the global problem of climate change. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Give grace to our families and friends. Thank you for our families and friends, for rejoicing together in times of celebration, weeping together in times of distress, and supporting each other in times of need. We pray for the people experiencing domestic violence, poverty, loneliness or separation and thank you for the individuals and agencies that support them. We pray that our combined church will continue to support people in need through CAP and Living Well, and that you will guide us in sharing your love for every individual in need through your family of the churches in Penge and personal contacts. We pray for children and young people as they prepare for the new term and for their move into primary uh, in their journey of education, and for the teachers and staff after the long period of disruption due to COVID. Lord, in your mercy, Here hear prayer. our prayer. Please comfort those who suffer in mind, body, and spirit. Please bring in silent prayer the names of people you know who are ill as we move through this prayer and pray for healing. Dear Father, please comfort those who are anxious or depressed and have lost the ability to hope and others who have severe mental health problems and bring them peace. 
and pl please support the agencies who are overwhelmed with demand for their services. Please be close to those suffering from cancer, for their care and protection as they receive treatment, and for their relatives and the medical services involved in their care. Please support those who have experienced accidents or injuries. Please help those with long-term medical problems, adjusting to new ways in living their lives. Thank you for the people who have received healing and those who have adjusted to disabilities and found fulfillment. Thank you for the healing ability within our bodies and for all those who have been healed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us as remember those who have died and their families who mourn them and remember their lives with thanks. Let us pray for those known to us personally. We remember Iris and Patricia, whose funerals took place recently. And Simeon and his family, Fiona, Stan and Howie, as we remember Simeon's life with thanksgiving. And think of his immediate and wider family with love at this time. Thank you in faith for the promise of your eternal kingdom and for the hope you have given us through the grace of Jesus' death and resurrection and for your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the, the sake, sake of, of your, your Son, Son, our, our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. We stand to say the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. I'm going to ask you to share in the way that you're used to here. So the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. What we do is we, we do the death sign so the peace be with you right and whatever you do also now's you. the time <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Rosa. Hein. We say together, yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You us. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Oh, Father, do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear son, as we eat and drink these gifts. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one. The body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal God, comfort of the afflicted and healer of the broken, you have fed us at the table of life and hope. Teach us the ways of gentleness and peace, that all the world may acknowledge the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And again, we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you, our souls and bodies, to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Do we have any notices, Janice? Um, I think um, Sally or Jono, I think you let them fight over who's going to do notices for the. The only notice I've got, I've got two notices. The first one is that, as far as I know, everything is on the notes and notices that everybody's received. And the second one is that next week is 10.30, Service of the Word. I think Jono, yeah. Looks like I won the fight with Sally then. Um, so first thing, we've been talking a little bit recently about how we start to try and bring the church back together after all the various lockdowns and as we can do things. And one of the really important things about that is children and young people. So I just wanted to kind of fill you in a little bit about what's going to be happening from September. So the exciting news is that we're gonna, we're gonna be starting up fully again with our children's activities on Sunday morning. It's going to be a bit different from the Sunday time that we had previously, um, and we're going to be calling it Blast. It's going to be 10.30 on a Sunday morning. It's going to be for children and young people of all ages, and it will be out in the lounge. We'll be starting off all together, but there'll be activities um, for different age groups to hopefully engage everyone. Um, we'll be learning from some of the great activities that have been going on at Messy Church. Um, so hopefully it will be really fun and something that we can start to get the families back into church. So any families that you're engaging with or talking to, please do let them know that from September, we're starting up again in terms of getting families and children together. And we'd really love to see them at 10.30 Sunday mornings. Um, and obviously if you've got any questions, feel free to chat to myself or to Sally or my wife, Kate, and we can hopefully fill you in. So that's the first thing. The second thing um, is Messy Church. Now, obviously, as you know, before the summer, we've been doing Messy Church every month on the second Sunday of every month. Now, that, the next one will be in September, on the 12th of September at 10.30 at Holy Trinity. Now, on that day, there will be um, an eight o'clock communion here um, for um, anyone that wants that. But there'll also be a 10.30 service at St. John's, um, who we'll, by that point we'll be coming together with. So... Um, we'd love to, obviously, if you want to come to Messy Church, um, let Kate know. Her email address is on the flyer and it will come out in the notices. Um, uh, but otherwise, we'd love to see you either at the ATM or at the 10.30 at St. John's. Um, thank you very much. Does anyone else want to, anyone else want to put any notices? Okay, we've now come to our final song. We're going to sing Give Thanks to the Lord. And we've got so many things to give thanks for. Definitely. So would you please stand? <laughs> Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King, His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things, His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. His mighty hand. 
outstretched arm His love endures forever For the life that's been reborn His love endures forever Sing praise who called us to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen, and settle us, settle us in the wonderful work that you do here in this church, within the community, and within the town. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us all and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.